and get confidence. But not like this guy, although he, he seems pretty confident. Uh, definitely not like that. Uh, I'm here to talk about HTTP smoke testing. Uh, why is it good and how can you uh, include it in your project? Uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Peter Heinz. Uh, I've been in the PHP scene uh, for, well, basically my whole adult life. I have more than uh, uh, six or seven years, oh, eight years, really. <laughs> it flies by, uh, of programming experience. I definitely love clean code, clever design, and regular expressions. Uh, I don't know if you uh, share my love for them, because it's, I, I've seen many people who just hate regular expressions. I have no un understanding why. I've dedicated uh, the last year and a half of my life uh, to Shopsys framework, which is an open source e-commerce framework for uh, bigger enterprise solutions. Uh, we're currently in private beta, but you could check it out. So uh, the main uh, question I want to ask you is, do you really test your code? I mean, uh, uh, does, does everybody here uh, write automatic tests? Is there, is there anyone who doesn't? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there anyone who is uh, kind of disappointed with his code coverage? Yeah? More people, okay. So uh, maybe, maybe that's something, uh, something uh, I can help you with. So first, what is smoke testing? Uh, I mean, the term uh, comes from uh, uh, testing new electrical devices, which are simply but put into an uh, electrical uh, plug. And if, there, if there's no smoke, it's okay. <laughs> so it's, it's just a basic, basic sanity check. Uh, it's not thorough testing in any way, but it can give you, it can give you some level of confidence uh, over the health of your project. So it, it works like a sanity check. So uh, when, we, when we add HTTP to the, to the term, uh, what I mean by that is uh, testing HTTP status codes uh, returned by your application. So you basically just make a bunch of requests for your application and then uh, assert that the status codes that your application uh, responded with are okay. So it basically just answers the question, is my application 200 okay? Uh, for this task, uh, we uh, developed a small little library uh, that you can use on your Symfony project. Uh, it currently is, is Symfony only, but the, the basic principle can be used in other frameworks as well. Uh, it's on shops slash HTTP smoke testing. So uh, first, let me let me introduce the the features of this uh, of this bundle uh, or or this or this library. The good thing is that it's almost maintenance free. Uh, I mean, there is there is some configuration you'll have to do. Uh, you'll have to provide some parameters. You'll have to say uh, what routes are you uh, on what routes are you expecting different status codes than 200, because no application just uh, tells 200 OK every time. Uh, so there is something you'll need, but it's it's pretty lean. Uh, the biggest advantage is that uh, when you add a new route when you add something new to your project, it just starts to test it automatic, uh, automatically. You don't have to do anything, just add a new route, uh, add a new controller, and uh, it will start uh, testing it uh, when, you, when you execute the tests. So, so this, is, this is pretty cool. 
the uh, big advantage is that it can have multiple scenarios per route. So, for example, uh, you, can, you can add a rule that uh, in ev for every route that starts with the keyword admin, you want to test it uh, without authorization and with authorization. So you just expect uh, 403 uh, forbidden when an anonymous user tries to log in and uh, it should uh, return 200 OK for locked in administrator. So this seems pretty obvious. Uh, the biggest advantage probably uh, is that it's, it works well even if your code isn't really written to be tested. I mean, does, does anybody here work with some legacy code? Yeah, few hands up. Uh, you, you probably know that legacy code is not really uh, well suited for unit testing or any kind of testing. So uh, this, this might help with that. Uh, if, you're, if, if you're on Symfony, Symfony 2 or 3, uh, you, can use this, you can use this component freely. Uh, and also, it's a good addition to your already existing testing suites. So uh, if you, for example, have a few unit tests or even uh, several scenarios for acceptance testing, uh, the HTTP smoke testing component will still add some functionality to your, to your test base. But it ain't all good and sweet, so there are some, some disadvantages. Uh, this may seem pretty obvious, but it checks HTTP response codes only. So it doesn't check that the prices on the page are correct. It doesn't check anything but the status code. But uh, we've, we've encountered several errors uh, that return in an exception thrown on the page we didn't actually anticipate it at all. It was a big surprise, but thanks to HTTP smoke testing, uh, it, was, it was covered. So we, uh, we did get the info and uh, fixed it before deployment. Uh, the, another disadvantage is that it makes real requests. So if you have a route that just deletes something from your database, uh, this is something you want to uh, solve beforehand. So uh, for example, you can uh, enclose it into transaction and roll it back uh, afterwards or something like that. But preventing side effects uh, is, is your job. And uh, when, you, when you have some database or uh, uh, some persistent storage, uh, which your application depends on, uh, you will probably need some, uh, some demo data, uh, which is always a clever idea to have some, uh, some uh, demonstrational uh, data to be imported uh, so that every test can depend on the same uh, data and your developers can develop on the, on the same data as well. It's a it's pretty, pretty sweet thing to do, but if you don't have, have this uh, demonstrational data, it might be a bit of pain to, uh, to work with this. So, uh, let's take a look. I mean, live demos are always fun, so let's do one. Uh, first, let me let me show you uh, the the GitHub page. So there is there is some uh, guide how to install this component. It's basically just a compulsory require, so you already know these. Uh, there is some uh, some usage guide, some documentation. So uh, you will not be on your own with this, uh, with this component. Uh, I've downloaded uh, Symfony Standard Edition today. So we have here just the welcome page. 
looks like a simple project. So let's require our, our component. Uh, I'm, I'm requiring in, uh, it in dev, uh, so it's, it's not a, a regular runtime dependency. This was much faster when I did it. <laughs> like, like 15 minutes ago, I did this, and it was like three seconds. So, okay. Uh, you can see that uh, PHP unit is installed in my Symfony app. And everything will be okay. So, first. Let's see how to use this. The thing is, you uh, make a test class uh, which extends the HTTP smoke test case. Uh, this will be your, uh, your test class that will be executed uh, really just like any other PHP unit test. So we have our component installed. I switch to my IDE and you can see this pretty well, but I'm just uh, creating a new PHP class, uh, which will be called, well, HTTP smoke test. And yeah, well, let's put it here. Namespace should be uh, tests a bundle smoke. And I'll have to make a new directory named also smoke. Just put it in here. So great. Now I will extend uh, the HTTP smoke test case. And as you can see, I have to implement one method. This is the most important method. And uh, inside this, uh, I will have to do all the customization of the, of the configuration of the routes. So I'll leave it like this, no configuration, and I will try to run it. Uh, I have one uh, one test in the in the controller directory, which came uh, from the from the Symfony uh, the Symfony standard edition, so I I will leave it there. Okay, so vendor bin PHP unit, and we can see that it all failed, but. The thing is that there are several routes that start with an uh, uh, underscore as a prefix. And there are, uh, there are just internal routes that Symfony uses, uh, for example, for this profiler, etc. So probably during this demo, we wouldn't want to test them anyways. So let's skip them. I'll use the uh, route config customizer for this. It has a fluent interface, so I will start writing on the, on the second line. And I will use the, the customize. Just use a function here, route config. And I will have a route info as well. Uh, these two objects will help me to define the rules. Uh, can you see it, see it well from the, from the back of the room? Or should I, should I uh, increase the font size? Okay, I'll, I'll assume it's good. So, uh, well, basically, if the route info uh, route name starts with an underscore, we want to skip it. 
So I'll get the route name. I'll get the first character. And if it's equal to underscore, let's skip this route. There is an optional parameter uh, called debug node. And it can, be, it can be used pretty well for uh, explaining why you do this rule. So internal routes are skipped. So when I run this now, you can see that the first, uh, first test pass, this was the test that was provided with Symfony Standard Edition. Uh, all the internal routes were skipped, and the last test passed as well. That's the, uh, that's the HTTP smoke test, uh, test case for this exact page. So now let's do something fun. Let's add a new action. So let's call it hello action. And it will be on path hello. And it will just return new response HTTP foundation new response hello PHP CE and uh, because in test environment uh, it doesn't automatically invalidate uh, cache of the of the router. Uh, I would have to either uh, call uh, cache clear from the Bing console and then call the call the PHP unit, or uh, I could over uh, I could overwrite. Yeah, thanks. Uh, or I should, uh, or I could uh, overwrite the setup function. So public function set up. to do the same thing as here, boot up the kernel, but with the debug flag set to true. This will be easier for this demo, so uh, the cache is auto-invalidated. Auto so now, when we run the PHP unit, we can see that two tests passed. And I mean, it's, it's pretty great that uh, you have something that uh, will run the tests automatically on new, uh, new, pa uh, new paths. So uh, so this will, this will obviously work uh, if I s just add some new, new hello, for example, hi, hi action. Hi, PHP CE, and PHP unit, three passes. Great. But let's, for example, think about uh, some road like this. It's uh, hi, slash, and some name. And this name will be used in the, in the output, for example. So you have now this, uh, this parameterized route Well, I won't. Let's say hi to Warsaw. Hi, Warsaw. 
But when I start the PHP unit, it will say that uh, the mandatory parameter is missing for this route. So what can I do with that? I will write another rule, which will, which will be route specific. I will say for route up default high, I will do some modification. So here I'll have the route config. Uh, which will basically just provide the correct parameter. So in my configuration, I will uh, change default request data set, which basically allows me to uh, call another set of functions, like set expected status code, set parameter, uh, or set out. So I will set the parameter name and I will tell my application that I am Batman. So now it will run and it will be okay. So great. Yeah, well, it's not. My, my computer sometimes does that. So uh, let's add for example, a new, uh, new action that will be also parameterized, will be also having name. So let's add hello slash name. So uh, this will be another route. It will, it will work, but uh, because this, uh, this, part of this rule was route specific, uh, it didn't know uh, that it should uh, input Batman there. So I can make a general rule from this instead. So instead of uh, applying this rule uh, to just one specific route, I can ask uh, if the route info has uh, this required parameter. So I can ask if there is any parameter which is called name, which is required, I will tell it I'm Batman. So now it works for everything. Of course, uh, when there is some, uh, some bug, well, usually bugs are much less obvious, but for the demonstrational purposes, let's do this. Uh, it will tell me that the expected status code was 500. When I add some, uh, some debug node here, default name is Batman, it will even tell me, uh, tell me all the nodes and it will be outputted uh, with, the, oh, come on, uh, it will be outputted uh, for me to, uh, to know which route with which rules applied failed. So I can, I can then go to the, uh, to the uh, controller and fix the, uh, fix the bug. But sometimes there are bugs that, well, uh, uh, they are only on some edge case. So for example, it works for Batman, but it does not work for Robin. If that is so, this will work. So uh, if we have some, uh, some typical data, uh, which uh, might sometimes work, sometimes not, uh, we can add a new, uh, new scenario. As I said, it, uh, it 
uh, provides the functionality for, for multiple scenarios with different parameters. So I just add extra request data set, saying I'm Robin now. I will set this parameter, and instead of Batman, it will be Robin. When I, when I start this, you can see that there are more assertions, and uh, this, this failed. I can then go to the controller, fix the bug, and everything is green again. So this is, this is pretty useful. Uh, it works even when I have more controllers. So when I add a new controller, with some uh, routes. I'll just uh, run the PHP on it, and it will test even those routes. It makes much more sense when uh, the actions actually do something useful and not only return a uh, response with a static, uh, static text. But I think you can, uh, you can imagine uh, the advantages of, of such a test. Uh, well, let's look at last thing during this demo. Uh, I'll have some, uh, uh, some uh, redirect action. I'll add here a route name. So redirect. This function will just redirect me to route name homepage. And when I run the test, what is missing? Oh, return keyword, yeah, well. Yeah, it's the, it's the same, <laughs> same uh, Oh, failure, but with different status code. Now it makes much more sense. Uh, it it redirected me instead of uh, instead of uh, returning 200 OK. So this is just the case when I will have to go to do my to my smoke test again and say uh, say to it that for this exact route I should expect something different. So, app new redirect function route config config. And I will here just change the default request data set because this route redirects. and just change the expected status code to 302. And now all assertions are valid. So with, with this uh, basic few lines of, uh, few lines of rules, few li lines of customization, uh, we can really tell our HTTP, status, uh, HTTP smoke testing component uh, what to expect from our application, and when I when I do a mistake uh, now in in my code, uh, I will uh, learn about that mistake pretty soon. So yeah. Is this really happening? Well. Okay, so uh, I'd like to speak some more about how this is used in Shopsys framework uh, to just give a broader uh, context from this, uh, for this component, how we use it internally. So uh, we do have five different uh, layers of testing. Uh, at, the, at the base, we have unit testing, of course, 
to just uh, have a very detailed, uh, detailed test that are uh, telling us exactly which method, which class is not working properly. Uh, then we have the integration tests that uh, try to test more classes at once. Uh, and it has already the, the demonstrational data at hand and uh, can do some assertions against that, uh, that data set. Uh, then we have HTTP smoke testing, which is not very sophisticated, uh, but it can work automatically and it doesn't need maintenance because uh, really when you, when you are adding a new uh, route to your application, oftentimes it has just one parameter and it can be something like ID. And if you are using uh, auto-incremented IDs, you can just use one for every test. And if you have at least one uh, demonstrational data record, it will just work. So uh, this, is, this is pretty useful. Uh, then we have the layer of end-to-end -end acceptance testing, because there are some scenarios that we really need to be sure that uh, can be uh, can be done successfully. Uh, we are in the, in the business of e-commerce, so for us this will be uh, processing orders, viewing uh, products. For you it can be something different. And then we have the nightly performance test, which runs on server uh, every night, just see uh, if the application isn't uh, needing more resources than it did in the previous build which is a very useful thing, because oftentimes uh, people do some functionality, some new feature on the demonstrational data set, which is not that, uh, that large. And then when you deploy this, uh, this feature, uh, the application can break, because there is like thousand times more products in their database than, it, uh, than your machine had. So, so this is a pretty good uh, practice. Uh, we, of course, have the demonstrational data, which are used uh, for development as well for testing. It's uh, pretty convenient to have this data set uh, included in your repository so everybody can work on the same data. Uh, we have automated this uh, with the tool called Think. I'm not sure. How many of you know Thing? Well, few hands. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty much like uh, GNU Make, if you know, know that from the, from the Linux. Uh, it just allows us to, uh, well, automate a set of commands uh, and just call it like Thing Test, and it will run uh, all, the, all the test suits uh, one after another. Uh, then we have the HTTP smoke testing enclosed in transactions. Uh, in the documentation on GitHub, uh, there is a few lines of code that uh, provide that, uh, that rolling back functionality after, after each uh, route is called. Uh, it's coupled with our other package, shops slash coding standards, uh, which just uh, sees that our code is uh, consistent. It, uh, well, uh, there are no violations of our standards. For example, uh, spaces are used instead of tabs or something like that, some wrong identification. And it can fix them uh, automatically as well. So, uh, so this is uh, pretty good when you have juniors on your team uh, so they don't need to focus on the, your, their coding style and can just focus on what, what is really important. And all checks are run on a continuous integration server, so uh, developers don't need to execute them manually, because when you have tests and don't execute them, they are not doing anything. So thank you, thank you for your attention. Uh, you can try it out yourself, or you can have, of course, some questions. Thanks.
Any questions? Oh, uh, can we have a microphone for? Thanks. Hello. Hi. Uh, I didn't catch that, but uh, does it require uh, like a web server, Nginx, or it's like from uh, common No, line no, on? no, it's built on uh, the kernel test case from uh, Symfony, which means that it... Uh, it uh, so it's calling the controller directly? Yeah, yeah, it's, it makes the request just internally. Uh, okay, and the second question, can you prepare like a scenario when uh, users visit this page and this page and this page and the re result is... Uh, no, there, no. There, there are no uh, scenarios with, with multiple steps. Okay, thanks. Hi, oh. uh, can you change the uh, order of the methods you, you call? Uh, if I can change the order of the methods? Yes, of the rules, for example. Of the rules, yeah, well, well uh, yeah, you can. I'm but uh, in your uh, test environment, I mean, for example, we call, for example, at first uh, new route, then uh, update route, or it's from up to bottom. Yeah, well, it's, it's from up to bottom, it. but uh, the default uh, the default uh, rules are made uh, beforehand. So, for example, if that's what you're what you're asking, uh, if I move this uh, extra data uh, request data set, uh, it will still mean that one will be Robin and the other one will be Batman. Okay. And second question: uh, it, it tests only uh, get route or post delete methods. Uh, yeah, well, it uh, doesn't really differentiate bef uh, between uh, get or post, but at the moment uh, you can't specify any sent data. Okay, thank you. So it's not, not very useful for posts. But if you have some post without any arguments, you can use that. And as well, you can have a rule so that only or uh, get methods are really tested. So with this line of code, I, uh, I can skip all non-get methods. <coughs> Any other question? <laughs> yeah, thanks. Hello. Uh, if I could understand, uh, that library is uh, made it for a symphony, yeah? Yeah, that's so correct. So what do you recommend for um, application? We are legacy, but not used any frameworks. Yeah, well, uh, you, well, basically, you can use the same concept, mm -hmm. but uh, without, the, without the library. I mean, uh, the library is providing just some, some uh, fancy rules, so uh, you can use it uh, more, uh, more fluently, uh, more, uh, more quickly, but uh, if you have a router in your application that can provide you the list of all routes, uh, okay. then, you can, then you can build on it. So do, do something like this. Or the, the second, second thing, if you don't even have any router, you can just write the list yourself. Yeah, but in this application, yeah? In this library? Uh, no, this, this library is for Symfony projects for only Symfony, at, so at this moment. Okay. But we were, we were thinking about making uh, Symfony agnostic, uh, mm -hmm. but our main focus right now is to make it really cool for use in Symfony, and yeah. then, then other... Uh, yeah, but when I thinking about legacy code mostly, I'm thinking yeah. about legacy code without the frameworks. Yeah, that's, that's correct, but well, you can, you can make a pull request. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, thank Hi. you for the presentation. Uh, I have a question about uh, these routes that you uh, provide yeah. in this uh, method. Yeah. 
to uh, achieve uh, all this test, small test for the uh, application system. Uh, when we have a lot of routes, a lot of route routings in our system or application, uh, how you manage them? Because it would uh, grow up yeah, yeah, to a very large extent. That's that's a good question. Uh, I can actually. Uh, we have we have a couple hundred routes, or maybe not maybe not routes, but definitely scenarios in the in the smoke testing component. So I can show you how we manage it. So this is smoke tests. Here we have the the actual smoke test. Uh, when uh, where we uh, do just the setup uh, setup customization and uh, uh, transaction rollbacks, uh, and here we have uh, the customized road configs, which is delegated to another class, so it's uh, it makes it makes more sense, and here it's delegated to four different uh, private functions, each with some some uh, distinct. Uh, uh, some distinct scope. So there are some some general rules. Uh, there are some uh, some uh, skipping of routes that we don't want to test. Then there is the f admin, and then there is the front end. So you abstract those repetitive actions that are required in all smoke tests in your application in uh, one class. Yeah. Say. Yeah. We or a more generic class. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, there is there is actually not that much of uh, customizations needed, even for a bigger project, uh, because well the, the the routes are pretty similar, and uh, when you start to think about generic rules, uh, you often find out that you can make, uh, for example, every name be John Doe, every ID be one, etc. Any other question? So thank you, thank you guys for attention. Thanks.